of starting fives for our game. Here are tonight's starting lineups. Okay, first for the Bulls, D. Rose and Jimmy Butler, the back. And down low, the two-time NCAA champion at Florida, the 6'11 tornado of energy and effort. It's the big man, Joakim Noah. Then it's Dang, and it's Boozer in at the four. And for Indiana, George Hill at the one, Paul George at the two. And starting seven foot two, one of the true giants in the game, another great big man out of Georgetown, Roy Hitter. Then there's Danny Granger, and it's West in at the four shot. And he's on the board early. The first to strike there. Nice hoop. It was certainly a slow start to the season for the Pacers. Their veteran and leading scorer, Danny Granger, was on the shelf with a knee injury, but somehow this team found its identity around defense and the emergence of some younger players that may serve them well going forward. You get Danny Granger back with the young, emerging talent, this team should contend for a while. Here's Hill following the score by Derrick Rose. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. And Granger was able to come back for them for a stretch during the regular season, but eventually had to once again miss the rest of the games. But the team had grown to where, you know, that probably didn't derail them, as it might have, Steve, in the past. Well, the big thing with the Pacers, Kevin, is that they have a lot of depth now across the roster. And with the emergence of Paul George, who kind of took Granger's spot, uh, they were able to move on pretty well without him. And he misses the second one as well, so he is 0 for 2 that time. Guys, how about the Bulls being able to nab the fifth seed in the East last season, in large part due to how they were able to play on the road. Of course, when you play tough, solid defense like they do, it makes it easier to be competitive and string together road wins. And Danny Granger gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. Full 24-second shot clock. First quarter just over a minute played. Tries again. And there's Joe Noah on the assist by Rose. And for the Bulls, defense is one of the few things in the NBA that can neutralize a home court advantage. And Steve, a big part of why they had the success they had on the road. Yeah, they went 21 and 20 away from the United Center. And one of only five teams in the entire East who managed to stay above 500 away from home. That's a, a real tribute to this team and the coaching staff. Here's Dang after David West's bucket. Good. You know, size-wise, this is not a great one-on-one -on -one matchup for him, but he got that shot to go. But you wouldn't know it by how he finished. That's a nice hoop there. Now here's West. Granger dishes to Hibbert. Working on Noah. Outside Hill. Indiana moving the ball around. West kicks to Hill. Just five to shoot. The shot no good. For Chicago, they've gone three or five shooting the ball so far. Well, George Hill, one of those unique stories, playing with his hometown Indiana Pacers. He's a native of Indianapolis and Broad Ripple High School. He was drafted by the Spurs. Played in their system for three years out in San Antonio and was acquired by the Pacers in a draft day trade back in 2011. And it's worked out well for both teams. And let's get this update now from Doris Perkins across the way on the sideline. I had a chance to catch up with Tom Thibodeau, and the conversation turned to how they plan to slow down Danny Granger. He said Danny's so tough because of his length, mobility, and shooting ability. You've got to play up and then try to surprise him with double teams. Make him a passer. Makes sense, Kevin. Back to you. And as always, Doris, thank you. West misses. And prior to last season, the Pacers signing George Hill to a five-year, $40 million extension. He's a good player, a really good combo guard, can shoot it well from distance, can, can run a team, maybe not a traditional point guard, but somebody who can help you win. I think it's a, a good move for the Pacers. Who's Granger with the defensive effort. West with the ball. And George, here we go. And that one is stuck right through. Boy, that was a violent throw down there. You're telling me. Well, you know when he goes up with both hands, it's going to go down hard. Rose against Hill. Rose, good. It's got to be nice for them to know that game in and game out, his offense is going to be there for him. George against Butler. 
Hibbert, the pass to George. West dishes to Hibbert. The shot's good on the assist by West. And they have to mix it up defensively. That was just too easy. The Bulls have gone four for nine from the field to start this game up. Shot is off. So Indiana will take it the other way. Noah's shot is off. He's far too tentative in the paint. And even more so when the defender is up tight on him like that time. Granger drives in. West kicks to Hill. Stolen by Boozer. Butler against Hill. Right side Rose. The dish to Boozer. And that one's good. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. Bulls had won the Central each of the last two seasons, but were unable to make it three in a row as the Pacers grabbed the Central Division title last season. Still, considering the injuries, the Bulls had a good run. The pass to Copeland. Stevenson dishes to Scola. No good. Great tee that time from Gibson. And back to the Bulls. They went 9-7 in division last year, Steve, and kept pace with the Pacers for a while for the title, but never could really close the gap. Seems like the Bulls are always in the mix for the Central Division title. I mean, since the realignment in 2004, the Bulls have never finished in the bottom of this division, and more often than not, they're in one of the top two spots. Run maybe the pass to Heinrich. That's good. Heinrich's got five. Well, you just can't give them that kind of position in the post. I'll tell you what, when he gets it in that tight, he's going to bury those. And Copeland kicks to Scola. Looking to end the run. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. They get Luol Deng. You can talk about a lot of other power forwards around the league. And even though Louis Scola never really explodes for monster games, a lot of his opponents will tell you he's one of the toughest guys to deal with because he's so consistent and has a lot of versatility to his offensive game. On well, speaking of Luis Scola, two-time MVP of the Spanish League, he didn't come to the NBA in, until his late 20s, but boy, when he arrived, he, he made a dent. He was ready to go immediately because of his experience in Europe where he was a, a go-to scoring threat. And, you know, he could do a lot of things offensively, whether it was posting up or making that mid-range jump shot. Now here's Butler. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Now here's Heinrich. He's covered by Watson. Butler goes in, gets it to go. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. Yeah, that's five of their last six baskets inside the lane. They have really established themselves inside. Stevenson with it, defended by Butler. 15 seconds left to play here in the first. He dishes it to Watson. Feeds it to Granger. Stevenson. Pocket six. And he drops in the layup off the glass. They've done well at taking advantage of some late defensive rotations and getting the ball into the paint. Yeah, they've been the aggressors, Clark. And getting the ball inside into that lane area has been huge for them. Now that concludes. And now the second quarter just getting set to start. In a moment now to quickly take a look at the offensive approach for Chicago. Guys, they're really passing the ball well here in the first half. You know, it also hasn't taken them long to make their mark in the paint. I mean, they're doing a lot of their scoring from in there. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Yes, Kevin. For David West, he was signed by the Pacers back in 2011, and he's helped them advance from a team that had lost in the first round to a team that pushed the Miami Heat to seven games in the conference finals. Now, re-signed by the Pacers and teammate Roy Hibbert, happy to have him back. Hibbert said, before David got here, we were soft. All we would do is shoot threes, and that was it. He came here, and he brought confidence. We played hard, we played together, and played as a team. Guys, David, a leader on and off the floor. Well, Doris, confidence so key in this league. Thanks. And, you know, you talk about Frank Vogel, guys, and the Pacers. It seemed he won over his roster from the moment he took over. He placed a lot of confidence and trust in his players and, most importantly, brought a breath of positivity 
and positive energy to that locker room and to that team. And Heinrich with the basket, the assist by Butler. Heinrich's got seven. The defense left him just a little window to get through, and he just ducked in for the layup. Terrific job. Score. And there's the whistle. Foul hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. And back to Bogle, he really helped instill the identity of this Pacers team of, of toughness and, and defense and, Steve, that willingness to battle. Yeah, it's a perfect fit with their personnel. The, the way he motivates this team to defend and play with that edge. Uh, I just love this group, the, the Pacers team, the talent, along with Frank Vogel. Just a really nice fit. Here's what Chicago's going with right now. Joakim Noah, he's checked in for Gibson. Boozer comes in for Mike Dunlap. And Derrick Rose is subbed in for Jimmy Butler. You know, in order to win your division, you have to be able to win games against the rest of your conference, and that's exactly what Indiana did last season. Tough team and a tough division, and they gave no ground to other teams in the East. And George, here we go. Back in off the glass. George has got eight. Well, he's so good at recognizing where the openings are and getting the ball to the rim. Now here's Rose. He's guarded by Stevenson. Heinrich dishes to Noah. Dang. Heinrich outside. The kick out to Rose. Wide open. Offensive rebound. Second shot opportunity. Good. He hits the jump shot. Six points for Carlos Boozer. Some defensive breakdowns are starting to show up now. Their last four buckets allowed have come from very close range. Yeah, giving up these easy chances is going to do wonders for their confidence. And the Pacers, as you mentioned. Oh, oh ridiculous. Tore it down that time. <laughs> How about the defensive disadvantage because of the differential in size? He's got no business trying to stop him from that slam. Roy Hibbert's checked in for Luis Stolt. Pacers trail by 11. Oh, trying for it. And out of bounds is Chicago gains possession. The Bulls have gone 4 of 7 from the field in this second quarter so far. And, and not to be overlooked about Lou Aldang. He's one of the elite perimeter defenders in the NBA. He's got tremendous size and length, lateral quickness. And boy, does he play with tremendous effort and focus night in and night out. He's one of my favorite guys to watch for. You talk about Dang's effort and toughness. Easy to see why he's a favorite of Bulls coach Tom Thibodeau. Yeah, he guts it out. He plays through pain, bad hamstring, torn ligaments in his wrist. Remember last year in the playoffs, he had the issue with the spinal tap. But such, just such a tough player and perfect fit uh, for the Bulls. Here in the second quarter, we've played a little over two and a half minutes now. Rose up on top. He's guarded by Hill. Rose, that's good. Really not hard to see why they're giving up points on this run. I mean, they've just given them too many looks inside. Yeah, I mean, they're just getting pounded in there. The defense not offering much resistance. They've got to force the ball back out to the perimeter. Here's Hibbert. Good, the assist goes to Hill. Hibbert's got his second bucket of the game to go. They have repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and it's paid dividends. Yeah, it sure has, Clark. I mean, with as many points as they've gotten in the paint, they really haven't had to do much on the perimeter. At the tip, he hangs in there and catches in on the second chance points. Such a solid performance for them inside. Their rebounding has been terrific. Yeah, that's just one of the few things that, that have gone their way today. Pass to West. It's good, and he threw contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. Kevin, it seems like scoring on the low post is kind of a lost art these days, but this guy can do it. I mean, he can get down on the block, get position, and he's got some skills to get the ball in the basket from that position. And you know what? He's a guy who will put some wood on you now. He'll throw his weight around. Bodying him up play after play can really wear you down. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, Doris Burke.
Doris, over to you. Gentlemen, last season it seemed there was a little back and forth between head coach Tom Thibodeau and the Bulls front office regarding the big minutes he gave his starters. Thibodeau said, quote, it's never the right amount of minutes. That's the only thing I know. If a guy's not playing big minutes, it's not enough minutes. And if a guy's playing big minutes, it's too many minutes. So you play to win. That's the whole thing. And when you're a young team, guys can handle minutes. But guys, both Dang and Noah missed significant time. Noah only playing 66 games in the regular season. Dang out through the last seven games of the playoffs. You wonder if maybe they have a point. They've worked to round out the roster there, so that should help those uh, minutes stay down. Well, if the Pacers wanted to grab the attention of the league with their postseason play, they certainly did that. They marched through the first two rounds uh, by knocking off the Hawks and the Knicks, and boy, remember, they were a game away from the NBA Finals. Here's Hibbert, and he goes up strong with one hand and flushes it down. Textbook example there of how to use defense to create off the yes, beautiful transition play after the steal all the way to the basket. Wasted no time going from defense to offense. Yeah, it feels like they're starting to pick up the intensity as the game itself starts to get a little more tight and close. Ultimately, the Pacers would fall to the heat, but they put them to the test. I don't think there's any doubt about that. They gained respect league-wide even more than they had going into the playoffs. It took you know, seven games, Clark, and you saw them all, which a lot of folks didn't see coming. I know that's the case, and yet... The way the Pacers showed such grit in that series, uh, it indicates they can compete with anybody. And when you have a defensive anchor like they do in Roy Hibbert, they've got a chance to be a championship team before long. Three consecutive baskets have come right at the rim. The defense had better start buckling down and tightening up. Yeah, they're getting exposed right now. Hill kicks to Hibbert. on the lane. Hibbert's got eight points in the quarter. And he's shaking off a poor first quarter shooting effort. He's really starting to turn it on now, guys. Rose against Hill. Boozer a screen on Hill. Throws off the bid from Noah. Heinrich sets a screen for Rose. Just five on the clock. Boozer passes to Dan. And that's out of bounds. Chicago will retain possession. Well, that pass had just a little bit too much heat on it for him to make a clean steal. Yeah, I think it would have been a tough catch for either of them. Taj Gibson's checked in for Carlos Boozer. From the inbound. A second chance effort. And Noah with a nice bucket inside. Noah's got eight points. But an eight-rebound advantage like the one they have now is always going to swing the score hard in that team's direction. And that's certainly been the case today. Their rebounding has made a huge difference. Here's Granger. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Well, you know, you'll take what you can from him from the foul line. Uh, a season ago, he shot in that low 60% range. And we saw it last year, guys, because those numbers were so low, teams weren't afraid to put him on the line uh, where points were hard to come by for him. Second free throw, no good. Not a typical trip to the line for him there. He had been knocking them down today. And finished off by Rose. It's astonishing to see a player, Clark, at his position who can get to the rim like that. Yeah, he goes very vertical on you, Kevin. <laughs> and once he's up there, you know he's going to throw it down hard. And through one half, it hasn't even.